Donna have a red light, so you know what that means. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you are well, and uh, I am glad to see you. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome back, those of you who have traveled or have been away, but uh, we're especially glad to, uh, to welcome you this morning. A uh, special welcome to uh, Christina, who hasn't been able to be with us for some time, so thank you. And uh, Emma, our UKIRK uh, volunteer, our UKIRK uh, aficionado, thank you for being here. Good to see you. We will welcome many from UKIRK over the next few weeks. Uh, are there announcements that you want us to be aware of this morning? Alan, he has a big announcement because he's standing up. This Thursday is the worship committee's fundraising spaghetti dinner and silent auction. Please buy tickets. <laughs> um, all the auction items are downstairs. We have very nice uh, items. Uh, we have. Uh, Two tickets to see Streetcar Named Desire Cardinal Stage Company along with the $25 gift card at Pozzoli's to have more spaghetti before the theater. We have two uh, CDs of, of Jean Kim, you guys remember her, mm -hmm. on the piano, and a, a bunch of other stuff. <clears throat> you can bid on that today and you can buy tickets today. We really, 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 really need you to buy tickets and get tickets and sell them to your friends, neighbors, and relatives or give them them. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Other announcements? Miriam is going to help make a special announcement. Uh, Christina, can you play Happy Birthday? We're not, she's not going to sing Happy Birthday, but uh, Miriam, what's this about? The road. You're pointing to the road. Right. Why? They're having an anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. you. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Rose. Happy anniversary. as Christina leads us in our prelude. you through silence to allow God to begin to speak. May God move through the clutter and the noise of our lives and our hearts 
and begin now to address the quietness that God invites us to. Whenever worship happens, there is hope, when before there was none. When we gather in God's name, there is community, when previously only isolation. Would you respond positively as, God's call, as God calls us to worship? Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We belong to God. When we feel overwhelmed, God is on our side. When we are afraid, God will keep us safe. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Thanks be to God. And now the opening hymn for the beauty of the earth, number 473. us with forgiveness and new life. First in silence, then in unison. Please join me as we pray to the one who waits to hear from us. First, a silent prayer.
And now, as we offer our confession, Holy Friend, even, even if we had not seen your light and love in Jesus, we might be discontented with many pain or thoughts, but words, or and actions. But since you have shown your beauty in Christ, we are much more aware of how badly we have fallen short, of how far we are from fulfilling our potential. We bring it to you now, the small diamonds of success and the clay of failure, the gems we are proud to remember, the sense that makes us ashamed, the silver smattering of wisdom and the drops of our trouble, the hope that still shines like gold and the mud of pessimism. We confess all that we have and everything we have been, and put ourselves in your hands. Touch us now, and we shall be made whole for your love's sake. Hear the assurance of pardon. Christ did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be redeemed. He is the one who declares to those who come in faith, your sins are forgiven you. Go in peace. We will live as forgiven people. Amen and amen. The, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Fish tank. Yeah. Did you get a whole bunch of fish? No, we're getting them next time. So. Cool. Wow. We have to set the fish tank up today, then we get it. But if like we have to wait one week, one after week. we set it up to one. get the fish. And you have to let the water and all that. With What'd you guys do this week? Did you get? <laughs> you went to school. Did you get your driver's license this week? <laughs> no. no. Did you get a new? Uh, uh, dog. <coughs> you know what I'm doing? I'm asking a whole lot of questions. questions. How many like to ask questions? <laughs> you, you ask what are a lot of questions. You ask a lot. Like yeah. what? Like at the fish place. Yeah. I was asking a lot of questions about the fish. Yeah, that's good to learn about fish. You ask ask questions. <laughs> no. I bet you might. Do you ask questions? <coughs> no? I bet you do. Well, that's okay, you know what, to ask a whole bunch of questions. you believe that? And an adult would say, ask as many questions as you want, wherever you go. Ask tons of questions. You know why I would say that? Because I'm not your parent. <laughs> but I'm also like questions. This set, what does that say? Be sure to ask a lot of questions. That means that wherever you go, ask questions. Because you know, what good are questions? They help you know stuff. They help you know stuff. If you don't know, how are you going to find out? Ask questions. And you know what? The older you get, 
the last questions that we like people to ask. That person asked too many questions. <laughs> and in fact, the better to do, it's better to ask a whole bunch of questions. In fact, there's a story that Jesus was in today where Jesus asked a lot of questions about himself and what people thought of him. And that was okay. And I think he wants that for us so that we know ourselves better and we know God better. Let's have a prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for questions. Thank you for helping us uh, be able to ask those. Help the people who listen to the questions to see the, what we have behind them, the intent. Thank you for your love that is always there and the patience to answer our questions. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to sing... What's the number? Two. Two. We're going to sing number two. Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elisha, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood but by, by my Father in heaven. Scripture continues from Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Hear a word of hope for your life. Paul, speaking to the church at Rome, says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is in serving, then serve. If it is in teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The majority of our week, as well as the majority of our lives, is centered around questions. Some trivial, others significant, and still others are quite critical to life itself. Of course, the title of this sermon was based upon that commercial of years back in which an established actor opened with this line to market his brand of credit card. But of course, we have our own questions that fill our days. What do you want for breakfast? What time can you see the doctor? Will you marry me? Do you take Suki to be your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward? Last week I participated in a pastor's installation to a new church and he was asked some significant questions to his, of his commitment to God and to that new church. When he was asked, do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? And will you serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? To those he answered, of course, I do, and I will. This week I have encountered persons having medical issues who have asked, why God? What is God trying to say to me? What are the questions that you have asked God recently? Surely you know that God welcomes our questions. God's response is not as a parent who grows tired of the constant why, when, what, where, questions that tend to come in droves. Even those angry accusatory questions are not out of bounds with a God big enough to accept whatever, wherever we find ourselves emotionally or spiritually. How do I know that God is accepting of our doubt and despair, our failure and our frailty, our need to have things put on, into perspective. Well, I'm glad you ask. <laughs> I know in reading Scripture, the frequency of questions poured from the hearts of people whose lives were filled with nothing but questions. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me? How long will you hide from me? How long will my enemy keep defeating me? Why have you left me all alone? From where will my help come? From the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
God welcomes these questions. More than just biblical questions, scriptural questions, but from outside stories as well. I've spent the bulk of my ministry with people in critical situations when life hung in the balance between life and death. And what usually comes in those moments are questions. Never once have I seen God lambast anyone who dares to verbalize those questions. But there's another reason that it seems not only right to voice our conflict and complaints, but that Jesus in his own life was led to voice a question that was basic to his ministry, also to his identity, not only as a good person, but a teacher, a preacher, and a healer. And yet still there were some basic questions. Jesus' questions to the disciples had a haunting, deep tone more so than the usual. Who do people say that I am? As if he were taking a poll. Is what we're doing making sense to people? Are they catching on? Do people understand what I'm saying? Do they really know me? And the disciples' response was classic. They did their best Google search long before Google was even an idea. They offered their best USA Today poll. Well, people are saying that you might be Elijah or Jeremiah, one of the prophets, maybe John the Baptist. They closed their books, grinned, and thought they had nailed it. But instead of handing out the gold stars, Jesus persisted, but who do you say that I am? Suddenly Jesus required an answer that did not have poll numbers and they could not Google. What do you say? Their answer could not come from their head. It had to come from their heart. They hem hawed over their guesses until Peter finally thought he had it. You are the Messiah, the Son of God. And the response was immediate. Peter, you just hit a home run. Jesus had never previously referred to himself as the Messiah. They had read Isaiah, which covered all of these questions. But it required something more so than their head knowledge. Peter could have answered, well, you're the son of a Galilean, a carpenter, a, a talented speaker, a rabbi. There are many ways he could have answered, but he did not. And Jesus affirmed Peter. Peter, no one gave you this answer. It had to have come from God. It had to come from your experiences with God. What question is God asking you? We have our chances to fire those questions at God, and admittedly they aren't always answered right away. But at least we can ask. But what does God want to know from us? I suspect the same question he asked the disciples might be in order. Who am I to you? Would we hem and haw as much as the disciples? Perhaps give a few wrong answers off the cuff? Who do you say that I am? Surely our first answers would come from our head. Well, you're God. Ding, thank you for playing. You came and died. You were a good moral person. 
But who do you say that I am? Personally, from your heart this time, how would you answer? It's a rather important question, wouldn't you say? In fact, I surmise that it's the basis of most of the other questions that we might ask that is centered in this one pivotal question. God, why? Who am I to you? Do you remember that I love you? God, are you there? Who am I to you? Do you remember that nothing can separate you and me? God, why is there so much disease, war, bloodshed, violence? Who am I to you? I have called you to bring peace <laughs> in every word, conversation, in your behavior. I have asked that you feed the hungry and clothe the naked. I have asked you to do justice, love, kindness, and walk humbly with God in every area of your life. Have you done that? Who is God to us? Comes from our head comes not from our head, but from our experience. And Jesus' answer to Peter, Well done, Peter. On that kind of faith I will build my church. On the faith that isn't based on the right answer, but upon the experiences of people whose lives have been affected and changed forever. On that faith hangs the message and the mission of this place and these people, you. Who do we say that God is? Careful now. Turn off your brain because the answer isn't there. The answer lies in what you have experienced with God. Do you remember your ninth grade algebra book? I spent over 30 years trying to forget my ninth grade algebra book. But miraculously, in the back was a gift. There you found the answer to most of the problems, at least the odd or even ones. And you, as you worked those problems, you could refer to the appendix to determine that you had worked them out previously correctly, right? Well, in Romans is a passage of Scripture in the 12th chapter that describes a bit more about answering that question, who is God to you? Remember I said the answer does not come from our head? In this well-known answer section is a primer in not only what we can do with our head, but with our heart, our bodies, our hands, and our time. Paul instructs the church at Rome, make your bodies mine. Present them as a sacrifice. Just like you saw in church, he would say to those people last week where the dove and the lamb were given as an offering, present your bodies as an answer to who am I to you? Allow your mind to be transformed by me, not by the world or by culture or some, what someone else has to say or thinks. This might mean that life's answers and the solutions that it offers will not come from the internet, newsflash, <laughs> or a news story, but a deep, personal, lasting relationship with Christ. Our minds are constantly bombarded by stuff for which there are few filters. What if that question were asked of us? Who do you say that I am? He says the body of Christ has many members like our own body has many parts. Each part has its own purpose. And as a member of this church has a distinct an important purpose 
That purpose is lived out through the gifts that it God has, has gifted each of you with. Some of you are encouragers. Some of you can cook. Others can pray. Others can do finances. In essence, those gifts are to be used in this place are a partial answer to that question. Who am I to you? I'm afraid some of us haven't answered that question very well. Many would say, gift what gift? <coughs> Others would say, let those who are more outgoing, confident, use their gifts. But the problem is that no one has your gift quite like the gift that God gave you. And no one can use your gift except you. And yet also, you have to answer that question for yourself. Who am I to you? Who do you say that I am? The answer cannot be made up. It cannot be from a book or one that comes from the internet. It must come from your heart. And I'll give you a cue. Your answer will be more important than any question you've ever answered. More important than who you marry or married. What career you chose or will choose. Where you spend your retirement and most anything, uh, most any other question. Says God, who am I to you? Take your time. Your answer will not be in what you know or what others have told you. Your answer will be in your heart. Look into your life and you'll find some cues there. How you spend your time, what you say, what you think. How you spend your money. Your attitude and behavior toward others. The important thing is not how others answer that question but how you answer it. May we pray. Challenging God, you do not answer, ask us questions for which there is no answer. You do not ask us questions to stump or trick us, but you ask in order to know us and to allow us to know you. Cause us to do some deep soul searching in answer to that question. Who are you to us? And in the courage of Christ we pray. Amen. May we now receive our tithes and offerings. <clears throat>
to get our bearings. Most of the time we buy and sell. Here we give and receive. We are thankful that we can give, not only to spread your love and mercy around this world, but also to remind ourselves of what is real value in life. By giving something today, we acknowledge that meaning in life does not come from stuff, but from a relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in that hope and with trust that we offer these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I welcome you to this time of sharing and prayer concerns as well as sharing of celebrations and joys and of course the joy of 60, 65 years. I was going to say 62 but I would have shortchanged you three years at the anniversary. What other celebrations, what other things would you share this morning? Yes. Fadi, Ali, Aida, and Sammy are all coming today. Fadi, Ali, Aida, and, and Sammy. And Sammy. Sa Sammy. Yeah. Fadi, Ali, Aida, <laughs> and Sammy are coming home today. <laughs> either to today, today or today, tomorrow. Today. <laughs> uh, pray for their safe travel. Wow. Your brother Brody's operation was successful. Your brother's operation was successful. Yes. Good. Thank you for your prayers. And he's home? Uh-huh. Okay. Richard Burkhart uh, was in uh, the oncology unit of uh, IU Bloomington. Uh, he was hopefully to have had his chemo on Friday and to go, I think, to Bell Trace, Bob? Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, continue to pray for Richard uh, during his uh, uh, days of, of chemo ahead, as well as for Ed as his, his chemo continues. Bob. I heard on the television this morning that Napa, California suffered a, a pretty big earthquake, 6.0. A lot of damage, they were still counting uh, injuries, uh, no word of any deaths there. Okay, a pretty significant earthquake uh, around the Napa, California area. Uh, John? I'd ask a prayer for Kali, who is having uh, hand surgery uh, this Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michelle. Um, I have a close personal friend who's having family issues, so I ask that we have for prayers for those. And then I have several friends and family who are looking for work. Okay, Andy. My cousin John is back in a halfway house and he continues to struggle with substance abuse problems. Okay, pray for Andy's cousin John. <coughs> uh, if you could take just a moment and look at the prayer list, there are several on that prayer list that we don't, we haven't heard from for some time, and. Uh, I used to call a prayer list a kind of a quagmire because people tend to get caught on it and we don't update each other quite uh, to the degree that, well, are, how are they doing? So uh, if you could give us a word on uh, Jim Fritch or Carmen or Dane and Anastasia or Lila or Nora or Ann, some of these that we don't, haven't heard from in uh, several several weeks. Anyone? Oh, yeah. Um, Dane and Anastasia are doing much better since the loss of their child. But Dane has had uh, very serious sinus surgery and complications with that. 
And right now they're treating Anastasia for postpartum depression. I haven't seen a child, so it would be good to keep giving the prayers. I, I definitely. Dane and Anastasia are continuing to need our prayers physically as well as emotionally and spiritually. Others that we could update? How about Nora? My mother is not doing really better, but uh, physically she's actually not so good. Okay. Continue to pray for Nora. Yes. Evelyn? Kim Bridges, Pastor. Good news. See what we get when we dig a little? People do get uh, better. Continue to pray for Jim. All right. May we take these and the others that we did not mention to God as we pray. We've been in this place before, O oh God. Place of friendship and fellowship. Place, place where we can bring our questions, our struggles. Place where we, we can meet you. And you can see us without the trappings of job or the ways that we tend to burrow into our weeks, busy, distracted. Place here where others need your help and your hope. And sometimes only that smile or that handshake or that hug is translated as your love to them. We lift to you those who are traveling in days to come and have traveled in recent days. Fadi and Ali and Ida and Sammy, as well as so many others that we did not name. We thank you that Mary Lou's brother is, is home and doing better, that Jim Fritch is on the road to recovery. We continue to lift to you Nora and Richard and Ed. We continue to lift to you Michelle's friend and others who are looking for work. We lift to you Andy's cousin John. Knowing that you know his quiet and private struggles, but we lift to you the hope that he needs in his life. Be with Colleen this week during her surgery and give guidance to doctors and nurses as they seek to work within her that gift of healing. Be, O oh God, for Dane and Anastasia the healing power that they desperately need as they continue to ask life's questions. We lift to you, O oh God, each other and thank you for this fellowship and this church. We lift to you those beyond us, far from us, who struggle in various ways with the Napa, California area, who this morning experienced an earthquake. We pray for those who have damage, those who are frightened and have questions about family members. We lift to you places of, of war, and bloodshed and violence and ask for peace to rule and prevail an almost unquestionable prayer but one that has to begin in each of our hearts in what we say and what we think with other people give O oh God a reminder that you hold our hand this day, this week, and as a symbol of that, we offer the prayer that you taught us, saying as one, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 281 is Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Just stand as we sing. to be able to uh, fill in for us prayers and uh, blessings for her and her husband as they uh, go and assume new duties elsewhere. God's blessing. And now go in peace, love, care for one another in the name of Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus rest upon you. The love of God embrace you and the presence of the Holy Spirit transform you and strengthen you for every good work, both now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to the Lord. Happy anniversary to you and many more. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. All right.